Welcome to the Marietta English program training on visuals for foreign language instruction. These visuals were created by the University of Pittsburgh as part of a project. This project contains hundreds of illustrations. These illustrations can be used to support instructional tasks to teach vocabulary and grammar. For example, describing objects, people, events, and even situations. These images are normally used for foreign language instruction, but they have so many different uses that can benefit students. There are options on the website to search for an image or to browse the entire collection. For the search function, you can just enter in a word or phrase, and it also has a field search option. You can look for a specific word or phrase in a title, description, etc. You can limit your search with using the second box and select and, or, or not. The browsing function allows you to look through 500 different images to see exactly what you want. Each visual has a brief description of the category and what the image is meant to provide. Here's an example of an image from the University of Pittsburgh's website. This is an example where your students can create a dialogue between the characters. Here's another example for anatomy. If you're teaching older students and they're learning about anatomy in a different language, this is a good opportunity to illustrate this. Here's another example. I don't know how many of you have taken foreign language classes, but whenever you learn about directions, there's always this map example, and you can label certain buildings such as the library or the school, and then you can ask your students, how would you get from the school to the library the quickest way? So then this uses the vocabulary that they learn in terms of directions. Next, I'm going to give you a brief tutorial on the University of Pittsburgh's website. The website is very easy to use and straightforward, and the two functions that I mentioned previously was the search and then the browse function. I'm going to go ahead and show you the search. Here you can see that there are two different boxes that you can type into, however it only requires that you type into the first. So what I did earlier was I just typed in anatomy, and then if you don't want something in the search to show up, you can type it in here, and then you can just put not, and then you also have other options such as and or or. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in anatomy and search. Here you can see the image that I showed you earlier, and you can see that it's actually categorized under anatomy, and then other tags that would have made this image appear would also just be people and bodies. So now we're just going to go ahead and go back so I can show you the browse function so that we can just go to browse all images. And this shows you the entire collection on the website. And you can see up here that it only shows you 20 images at a time. And then you can see that there are up to 467 images on the website. So here you can just kind of browse around. And then there's also a way for you to sort the results. You can sort it by title and then the relation to each other. As you can see, there are a number of different ways that you can use this tool. This can allow students to learn and reinforce their vocabulary and also give them an opportunity to make their own story. That wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for watching.